I want to show you how you can calculate the beta for a stock and then ultimately to calculate the beta for a portfolio of stocks. So here I happen to have some stock prices. I have the S&P 500 index, I have Johnson & Johnson, Caterpillar, Apple, and Berkshire Hathaway. And I've downloaded these from Yahoo Finance. So you can see here, yes, this is um, Berkshire Hathaway. You can type in the ticker, BRK-A. And then you can choose historical data. And you can set the date. I'm using monthly data. And you can adjust the dates. And then you can download it. And when you download it, it comes down as one of these um, CSV files and it'll give you the date, the open, the high, the low, the close, and the adjusted close as well as the volume. So the adjusted close is the close price adjusted for stock splits and stock dividends. So this is the price I'm going to use. So and you can also do this for the S&P 500 index as well the ticker there is SPX and the same thing. Choose the dates and then choose whether you want daily or monthly or weekly. So I've you I'm using here monthly data from the beginning of 2018 to the end of 2023. So five years of monthly data. So let's go back to this here. And so we have these prices but what we need is we need returns to estimate beta. So the formula would be it's the, it's the um, current price divided by the past price minus 1. So I'm going to put this formula in here. And remember, I'm going to lose one day, or I'm sorry, one month, because um, I need the previous month to get started. So I'm going to begin here in February of 2018. So this is going to be equals to um, the price in February divided by the price in January minus 1. And you can see it's minus 3.895% um, and what I can do is I can copy this across. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to copy this across and you can see that Berkshire is, let's make sure this is right, cell F6 divided by F5 minus 1. And let me just format these. I'm going to make these percentages. I'm going to expand the decimal places a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this all the way down to the end of my file here. And so now I have the returns for all of these, these companies over this five-year period. So what I want to do is I want to calculate the beta for each one of these. So beta is the slope coefficient when you run a regression of the returns of the company stock against the S&P 500. Now there are a couple of ways you can do this. If you want a lot of data statistically, you can use the data analysis function. So you go to the data tab, data analysis, and then you choose regression. And it'll ask you for the uh, y variable, the dependent variable, and the x variable, and where the output goes. And you'll get a lot of information such as uh, the T statistics, the R squared. But really all we want is the beta, the slope coefficient. So probably the easier way to do this, because right here I don't really care about all those uh, descriptive statistics. So here I'm going to put in beta. There's a function called slope. And it will find the slope coefficient. So the first thing we put in is y. So this is the y variable. And then we want to put in the x variable. 
which is this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the F4 key because I want to lock that cell so I can copy this across. So we'll use the next one as the Y, but keep this as the X variable. So let's see what we get here. This puts it in percentage terms. It's not really a percentage. It's actually a just a number value. So 0.55. And then let me copy across here. And we get 1.17, 1.27, and 0.86. And just in case we don't remember which companies those are, let me just copy the headings down here and I'll put them right here so we can see. All right, so J&J's beta is 0.55, Caterpillar is 1.17, Apple 1.27, and Berkshire Hathaway 0.86. How do these measure up in terms of the actual company's information? Let's see. So let's type in J&J. And it's going to be a different sample period, so it's going to be slightly different. Let's see what J&J's beta is. 0.53, I believe we had 0.55. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, Class A stock. Let's see, they are coming in at 0.88. So we can see that um, pretty good, pretty good. We could check Caterpillar and Apple as well, but those are pretty close. I've already looked at those. So now you've calculated the beta for each one of these uh, securities. This is the systematic risk of each security. Now, if you wanted to calculate the portfolio beta, all you have to do is take a weighted average of the betas you've calculated. So let's put some weights in for our um, securities here. So let's say we put 20% uh, in J&J, &J. we put 25% in Caterpillar, let's say we put 35% in Apple, and how much is left? 10% for Berkshire? So these should add up to add up to 100%. So let me just make sure that I've done this correctly. Oops, I did not do it correctly. Let's see, that's 45 and 40, so let's make it 20% in Berkshire. So you, make, you wanna make sure you check that you have the right um, numbers in here, that these add up to 100%. So now all we have to do to calculate the portfolio beta is multiply each beta by its weight and then sum them up. So I'm going to say here equals this times this. And then I'm just going to copy that across. And then I'm going to sum it up. So we get a beta of 1.02. Alternatively, you could calculate the portfolio beta using the sum product function. So if you haven't used it, sum product will multiply, uh, take two arrays. So this is the first array and this is the second array. So it'll take this array and then multiply it by the first one and then add it to what's multiplied by the second one. So a little bit simpler. That's the first array, comma, and then I highlight this, and we should get the same, the same answer. Okay, it's rounded off here. Let me uh, reduce the number of decimal places, but you can see it's also 1.02. So really simple to calculate the betas. So again, you can get this uh, stock price data from Yahoo Finance. You can download it to an Excel spreadsheet, and then you have to convert it to returns, and again, the return is going to be the current price minus, I'm sorry, divided by the past price minus one. Copy that formula down, do it for all of the um, securities, and then we can use this slope function here 
to calculate the beta. So the slope, it asks you for the y variable, so you put in the y variable, and then you put in the x, and then I'm going, I locked the x cell so I could copy across, and you can see I've calculated the beta for everything, and then ultimately I calculated the portfolio beta. So a, so a portfolio consisting of 20% of J&J, 25% of Caterpillar, 35% of Apple, and 20% of Berkshire Hathaway would have a portfolio beta of 1.02.